I want to address the drama around the Israel-Palestine conflict, not only the situation in the Middle East, but the new breed of social media activists and protesters in cities and universities. Why? Because people keep commenting and messaging me and also my wife Laura, attacking us both for not taking a stand for Palestine. There also have been cancelling campaigns on social media to cancel, block or harass anyone who doesn't speak out for Palestine. So this is going to be a longer video. So if you suffer from the short attention span epidemic, you might want to stop right here, right now and keep scrolling to keep your dopamine supply coming. For those who stay, I invite you to have an open mind for what I'm about to say and even if you don't agree with all of it. I hope we can find some points that we do agree with, especially the main point that we care for humanity and we want to know how we can stop the intense division we are seeing in most countries right now. Many of the claims saying we are silent about Palestine are simply not true because we have addressed this topic in depth last year in our two hour podcast called Israel, Palestine and War, a psycho-spiritual and occult perspective. We are also talked about my views and experiences in depth, not only from a superficial black and white geopolitical point of view, but most importantly from an esoteric occult perspective. Secondly, I have been very outspoken against Zionism, the Israeli occupation of Gaza, Palestine and the ongoing attacks. In fact, from 2006 to 2014, 18 years ago, over a span of eight years, I was an activist attending pro-Palestine protests. I also used to post all the gruesome pictures of dead Palestinian children and civilians, wrote long posts and articles exposing Zionism and more for years. On a side note, some of the pictures you actually see nowadays on social media are not from the current conflict or even from that region, but ties into the psychological warfare via media propaganda that we're seeing now from both sides. We need to be aware of the war propaganda machine and the military industrial complex which fuels war and how it manipulates us and ask ourselves who benefits from certain narratives being pushed. It was at one of the pro-Palestine protests in Los Angeles 10 years ago at the federal building with the Palestinian flag painted on my face holding a sign that said Zionism equals terrorism when I realized the futility of just protesting or sharing information. I realized the issues are way deeper and I'm just fighting shadows on the wall like in Plato's allegory of the cave. Fueled by a self-righteousness that was in itself a mask for my unconscious trauma, shadow and my own unhappiness as I used activism to make myself feel better about myself fueled by my projections and my unconscious need to be a savior for the oppressed as I engaged in virtue signaling while shaming and guilting anyone who would not speak out. Sounds familiar? We are seeing the same thing now, but most will deny it and will feel justified in their cause, self-righteousness and virtue signaling, just as I did. Why? Because it happens on unconscious levels, while there are spiritual forces from unseen realms manipulating both sides, with Wetiko working through the so-called activists as well, as it did through me. I'm not blaming them or you, I used to do the same. Mass movements create their own mass psychosis, which makes us act out in all sorts of strange ways disconnected from our true self. Yes, seeing the images of war is very distressing, the situation in Israel and Palestine it's very sad, shocking, but also very complex. It's been a conflict for over 60 years. I realized that I got sucked into an oversimplified black and white victim perpetrator perspective and dynamic. My own stuff got involved, especially if you just go by images you see on the news and social media, which are easily manipulated for propaganda purposes from both sides in order to shock you emotionally on purpose and hijack your compassion, empathy for maximum energy harvest otherwise known as Lush. There are also other forces operating way beyond what we perceive physically, operating in the classical divide and conquer fashion. It is no different now than what was happening of BLM and the so-called need for anti-racism and focus on white privilege a few years ago. Now the Israel-Palestine conflict is being used for an agenda most of the activists have no awareness of, as they are being used as useful idiots and pawns on the occult chessboard. By the way, the term useful idiot is not meant as an ad hominem attack, but it's a term for a person who thinks they are fighting for a cause without fully comprehending the consequences of the actions and who they're really serving. They're being manipulated by political players and hidden forces. The term has its origin in communist Russia. Useful idiots were non-communists regarded as those who were susceptible to communist propaganda and psychological manipulation. On a 3D political level, it ties into cultural Marxism and the attempted communist takeover 
just like this prominent leftist pro-Palestine activist admitted. Even if they don't explicitly identify as communist by dealing blow after blow to US imperialism, Iran, Hamas, Ansar, Allah and the entire axis of resistance are doing far more to create the conditions for communism to be possible than literally any Western armchair communists. What we're seeing now is a rising emergence of the unholy alliance between far left, neo-Marxist communists and radical Islamists with the aim to destroy the US, the West and democracy as we know it. Indian investigative journalist Azra Normani, who is also a Muslim, wrote a book about it titled Woke Army, the Red-Green Alliance that is destroying America's freedom. In a recent tweet on June 1st, she wrote, The Party for Socialism and Liberation, a self-described Marxist-Lenist communist group, is behind the protests on the streets today with their trademark black and white posters. And they are marching in an unholy alliance with Muslim organizations in a campaign to not only destroy Israel, but the US, the world and democracy as we know it. This is a threat from US Berkeley to Israel and India and beyond. Don't get distracted in the tunnel vision if Israel should legally exist or not. This is way bigger than that. And the vast majority of pro-Palestine protesters have zero awareness of what they're actually supporting. If you have noticed, India has also a huge problem with radical Islamists, just like Europe as well. It's not a pretty picture at all. There are many radical Muslims organizing and participating in pro-Palestine protests while luring in the naive woke left and now also gullible social media influences for their agenda. It ties into the playbook of Marxist cultural revolution where the issue is never the issue, but the issue is revolution in order to bring in communism. In other words, for the neo-Marxists, it's not about Palestine, anti-racism, BLM, climate change or any of these other heated social issues. The puppet masters behind it all couldn't care less about all that. They just use these causes for their agenda and to create maximum chaos and destabilization by luring in gullible people as useful idiots for their cause. And once they are no longer useful, they will destroy them just as Mao did in communist China. Hamas are also not just innocent freedom fighters fighting for a great cause, as I also used to believe at some point in my very biased view, but also consists of radical Islamists and religious fanatics who do not care for the Palestinian people, but have their own corruption and agenda, and who also can become vessels for dark, Assyric, occult hostile forces. There's the extreme fundamentalist side of Islam, which many Palestinians are not excluded from. So be careful of your overly positive projections towards them too. People say, if you point out these issues, it makes you Islamophobic. So most don't say anything for fear of being branded in this way. But my point really here is that there are religious fundamentalists on both sides and almost every religion has them. So let's not forget the ultimate irony here of many woke far left pro-Palestine protesters who would be beaten, arrested or even tortured or killed for showing off their choice of same-sex attraction or practicing gender fluidity in most Islamic countries. Try doing a pride parade in Iran and see how far that goes. Like this guy said in this tweet, who is going to tell they them? Here's also a recent tweet of the supreme leader of Iran addressing leftist activists on US campuses. It shows you how he sees these protesters as useful idiots for his agenda and expendable tools, nothing more. Dear university students in the United States of America, you're standing on the right side of history. By the way, if you do support communism, socialism or neo-Marxism, you have walked into the wrong bar and you have no idea what you support. My father has tales to tell when he grew up in socialist communist Eastern Germany. He was imprisoned in solitary confinement for one year for going against the party line before his escape. Also, please don't tell me this nonsense that communism or socialism have not been done the right way yet. We have plenty of examples in history of how deadly this ideology is. So, what is the solution, you may ask? We need to become the change via the inner psycho-spiritual work, which is the only way to bring about more harmony and peace in the world, according to the universal and divine law, as within, so without. Seek the kingdom of God within you first. As Krishnamurti once said, there's really only one war, the war within ourselves, which produces external wars. This is not spiritual bypassing or just meditating on peace, nor does that imply to be inactive. I don't suggest a new age love and light cop out. It goes much deeper than that. I actually don't see many people who are engaged in this work sincerely and truthfully, especially activists, 
for it's always easier to project externally. I know how hard it is putting the mirror right on myself and I still have much work to do. I've written all about it in dozens of articles and talked about it in many hours of videos and podcasts over the years. It's impossible to lay it all out here. I already know that people will pull straw man arguments and project all kinds of nonsense and assumptions onto me and my words or they don't take the time and effort to read or listen. I'm not here to reach everyone. And I know I am also not perfect, nor fully awake in the true meaning of the word. What I realized, however, is that a shift of consciousness implies becoming aware of the occult forces, entities and beings who are behind all wars and human conflict, and especially how they work through us and not just seeing it out there in others. If you think you're only good and virtuous and only see evil out there in the other side, this occult matrix has you in its grips. The danger of falling into extremism on either side is that actually it gives the extremists on the other side a reason to exist. Thus, the game of divide and conquer continues, producing more and more war. People tend to not face their shadow, but only project it externally. Instead of merely seeing evil out there, can you face your own capacity for evil? We had a podcast episode about that topic as well called What Facing Evil Can Teach You. It's quite a humbling moment when you face the darkness within you that you have denied for so long. That's when the real work starts. And once you truly see the unseen, as it's called in esotericism, you will stop useless activism on social media. I understand that many will be upset with me for stating that, as I would have gotten upset hearing that too 10 years ago. If you're sincere in that inner process, which is not comfortable at all, and it takes time, will, and effort. For there will be immense internal resistance with occult forces distracting you from the work. You will realize that your strings are being pulled like a puppet through your unconscious social and cultural programming via the occult forces tagging into your shadow and wounds. This is what makes you an easy target for social and political manipulation and you become a useful idiot yourself. This work requires humility in order to withdraw your projections and hold the tension of opposites within you without identifying with one side. No, this is not about being neutral either, nor is it about the truth being in the middle of the two. Holding the tension of opposites is a deep psycho-spiritual alchemical inner process that will result in disillusionment as you come face to face with the false personality and lies you have been telling yourself about yourself, often for years or even decades. I had to face the same. It's not a pleasant process, but holding this tension and withdrawing your projections is how you give birth to the true self. We explain this process in another recent podcast called How Can We Heal This Polarized World? If you really want to see positive change in the world with conscious action and stop going in circles mesmerized by shadows on the wall, this is the inner call to answer. Once you understand and apply the work in your life 24-7 and realize how your personal unconscious triggers and projections manifest through the collective unconscious in the form of wars and human conflicts and also truly see how they are occult forces and beings manipulating humans from unseen realms through both sides and you and the activists, you will also realize the futility of just choosing one side, victimizing one and putting the perpetrator label on the other side in a superficial black and white fashion. Sure, you will feel good about yourself and you'll get your dopamine hit for having done something, but this virtue signaling often just feeds the ego and other forces rather than create positive change. Again, I did the same and I would also vehemently deny this point as you may now. So I understand if people do the same with my video. I'm not trying to convince you. I'm only sharing my experience and insights. I would never tell anyone what they should or shouldn't do. So do as you please. But I did all that pro-Palestinian activism, so spare me any projections of telling me to speak out and take a side. I was literally saying the same things as many of you 15 years ago. So I was also a long time pro-Palestine activist long before the woke cult hijacked the Palestinian freedom movement for their agenda, their unholy alliance with Muslim extremists, and this very oversimplified and generalized idea of decolonization, which the neo-Marxists have hijacked for their agenda. Yes, what is happening in Gaza is horrifying, like any war. And yes, the Zionist thought police will call you an anti-Semite for criticizing the state of Israel. We know that as well, just as you will now be called an Islamophobe for criticizing Islam. However, what is happening to many Jews now is also horrifying as they are now being demonized with real anti-Semitism, not just anti-Zionism. Divide and conquer is on full display. 
Many of the new influencer pro-Palestine activists just jump on the bandwagon, blindly screaming decolonization and chanting from the river to the sea, like NPCs in a hive mind overtaken by an egregore group entity. Over a decade ago, I spent dozens of hours researching and digging deep into the topic of Zionism. Since then, I've seen this information being abused by people and activists and turned into true anti-Semitism, Jew hatred, and literally blaming Zionism and the Jews for everything wrong in the world. I lost some good friends in this dark black hole anti-Jewish tunnel vision that started out as activism and anti-Zionism. If you see it that way, the matrix has you and you're entrapped by forces you have no awareness of working through you, like a wet Tico mind virus. Even worse, if you feel justified in it, all of which is the greatest deception. It's the occult game of stalking and divide and conquer. I wrote an article about that as well. Focusing on the 3D manifestations of the matrix, which are just symptoms, will never bring about true positive change. It doesn't matter who you blame or focus on within the 3D level of the matrix. The government, the Illuminati, the Zionists, the Jesuits, the World Economic Forum, all kinds of secret societies, and so on. They all are pawns themselves and puppets to these occult hyperdimensional forces, including yourself. If you don't truly know thyself and how they can get a hold of you and make you work for their agenda, you can also easily become their pawn. That's why the inner work is so important, more important than any activism or changing your profile pic to a flag or black square or whatever the newest thing is. If you want a more nuanced, in-depth view beyond the superficial 3D political view or getting caught up in the endless drama triangle of victim, persecutor, savior, listen to our podcast, Israel, Palestine and War, a psycho-spiritual and occult perspective. And also our most recent podcast called Facing Cancel Culture with Courage where we dive deeper into this topic and also talk how the current pro-Palestine activist movement got hijacked and became useful idiots for the neo-Marxist communist agenda. And listen, I know I don't have all the answers. I learn as I go along and I keep learning. But what I do know now is that we need a complete different approach and ultimately a shift in consciousness so we don't destroy ourselves and fall once again into a dark night of civilization. It happened many times before and would continue until we learn our lessons. I'll leave you with this quote from the mother, Mira Alfaza. At the moment, we are at a decisive turning point in the history of the earth, once again. From every side, I am asked, what is going to happen? Everywhere, there is anguish, expectation, fear. What is going to happen? There is only one reply. If only man could consent to be spiritualized, and perhaps it would be enough if some individuals became pure gold, for this would be enough to change the course of events. We are faced with this necessity in a very urgent way. This courage, this heroism, which the divine wants of us, why not use it to fight against one's own difficulties, one's own imperfections, one's own obscurities? Why not heroically face the furnace of inner purification so it does not become necessary to pass once more through one of those terrible, gigantic destructions which plunge an entire civilization into darkness? This is the problem before us. It is for each one to solve it in his or her own way. <laughs>